What companies deserve your hard-earned dollar? Which would you want to work for? How can you know if they share your values? Just ask us. Just Capital is a nonprofit that tracks who really means business in supporting workers, customers, communities, the environment, and shareholders. We measure progress, track success, and help them be better. When you see the Just Capital seal, you know what's real because just business is better business. Visit justcapital.com to learn who makes your dollar count. Good afternoon. We are doing it live right here in the 4 o'clock hour on 790 KBC. Getting right down to business here with the News Driven Hour. We're doing more in 2024, now at 4 in the afternoon. In case you hadn't heard, it's Motec on Money live on the air here in 790. KBC streaming live online worldwide at KBC.com and your on-demand Motec on Money podcast at KBC.com, Apple iTunes, and all your favorite podcast platforms. Coming in hot, the latest reading on inflation for the month of January. This is something the Fed pays attention to, and so do investors. Coming in hot today, the inflation reading and uh, causing a sell-off on Wall Street with the Dow plunging more than 500 points at the closing bell. Had been down more than 700 during the trading day. The hotter-than-expected inflation report throwing the financial market into a tailspin. And uh, looks like uh, investors' expectations have also changed on how soon and by how much the Fed might soon or may not be too soon cutting interest rates. The consumer price report uh, we got today suggested the road toward the Fed's 2% goal for inflation is going to be more than uh, bumpy. It's possible that investors and policymakers might have completely misjudged how powerful inflation and sticky it is. So uh, we're going to be talking about that here very shortly. The yield in the 10-year note, for example, which impacts Fixed-rate mortgage rates out there took a big jump today, back to 4.31%. Uh, before today's uh, Consumer Price Index uh, report, uh, some on Wall Street were expecting scenarios in which the Fed might not cut rates uh, at all this year. Investors might need to factor in the risk of rate hikes as well, and uh, that's uh, back on the table following today's reading. It looks like uh, the U.S. created 353,000 new jobs. As unemployment stayed at 3.7%, according to to the last reading. That's the other reading, of course, the Fed pays attention to along with inflation. Their mandate is to have uh, full employment as well as have that inflation rate down to about 2%. So we did see Treasuries sell off sharply today, sending yields, which move in the opposite direction to bond prices soaring. And uh, we're watching the uh, Consumer Price Index today rising 0.3% in January, with the year-over-year -year rate falling to 3.1% from 3.4% a month earlier. Still hotter than most analysts had expected and still above the Fed's 2% target. Taking a look at the action here today, the Dow down 525 points at the closing bell at 38,273. Coming off the record high we hit in the previous session, the S&P 500, which hit a record high on Friday, pulling back another 69 points today at 4,953, pulling back below 5K after clearing 5K last week for the first time. And the NASDAQ taking a tumble today with the tech names getting hit down 287 points for the NAS at 15,656. The Wall Street Fear Index, the volatility index, spiked 14% today. The price of oil, meanwhile, has moved up for the seventh session in a row with the upheaval in the Middle East continuing. Crude oil futures in New York up nearly a dollar, just below $78 a barrel. And Brent crude in London up about 77 cents to 82.77 a barrel. Bitcoin taking another wild ride today, right now up about 300 at 49,736 after popping above 50K for the first time in a couple of years yesterday. Ethereum up eight at 26.40 and Doge right now at eight cents. We'll get an update on how your taxpayer money is being spent today with Grover Norquist in Washington, the president of Americans for Tax Reform on the LA crime scene. You probably heard it at the top of the hour. Shoplifting reports in Los Angeles surging by 81% last year. Overall crime also up big, as you've been hearing. I'll discuss all that with the Honorable Dennis Zine, former L.A. City Council member, retired LAPD sergeant, current LAPD reserve officer, about the latest crime reports, as well as the intense contest for the Los Angeles County District Attorney and another debate in that race set for this evening, which I'll be moderating. But first, on your markets, the economy, and the whole works now, Gabriel Wisdom, Managing Director at American Money Management and author of Wisdom on Value Investing. Gabriel Wisdom, thank you very much uh, for taking the call. Uh, we were reminded today that the tide comes in and goes out uh, following that record high just yesterday, a, 
a plunge of more than 700 at the worst level today and, and a closing loss of 525 for the Dow. Give us your reaction to uh, what we just saw here. Well, Frank, those are dramatic numbers, but as a percentage, uh, they're a little less than 2%. But just the same, it was uh, it was dramatic, and it all has to do with the very hot uh, inflation number, the consumer price index, that came in much higher than consensus. Uh, the core CPI was up, uh, what, about 0.39% versus what everybody thought would be 0.3%. The real culprit here was interest rates. The bond market, uh, it sold off sharply, which means it yields or, or rates went up. The 10-year now is at 4.28%, and that's way up from 3.8% just a week ago. So, you know, sentiment has, has shifted on this inflation uh, report. There are really four culprits behind today's uh, hot CPI, Frank. Uh, shelter, uh, the cost of uh, living somewhere, that accelerated. Auto insurance uh, accelerated. Uh, personal services went up. Uh, hospital services, uh, uh, health care, uh, that rose as well. But on balance, inflation is still falling. The CPI is annualizing at 1%. So, you know, another tell would be very low margin debt. Uh, it, it, so th there's not a lot of borrowing. There's not a lot of uh, irrational exuberance in, in the market. Lots and lots of cash earning around 5%, lots of dry powder. So it's not all bad. On the air live with Gabriel Wisdom, money manager and managing director at American Money Management based here in Southern California. The, when uh, when people say what's up, I usually answer nothing but the rent. And that was certainly the case uh, again in the month of January with that uh, consumer price index uh, showing rents accounted for more than two-thirds of the rise in the consumer price index. Uh, looks like, though, uh, food price is also higher Grocery food inflation increasing by a 0.4 percent, and uh, and the list goes on here. Um, what what is your outlook uh, on inflation here, and and will we get down to the two percent target anytime soon, or or will it be more sticky than uh, most people thought? Well, Jay Powell is really committed to seeing the rate start to go toward two percent. He uh, he spoke uh, extemporaneously on on 60 Minutes uh, recently, and. And I thought he did a good job uh, talking about uh, how the Fed is keeping its eyes on on the numbers. They're looking at uh, the metrics rather than uh, being influenced by politics or public sentiment. And I think that's all good. He said they don't need to get to 2 percent in order to cut rates sometime in May. But at the same time, I think it's it's important to remember that these interest rate cycles, if history is any guide, they are very, very long cycles with long tails. We had rising interest rates for 30 years following World War II from 1950, peaking at around 1980. And then we had falling interest rates for a little more than 30 years. And maybe we're in a rising interest rate environment again. After all, uh, we need to defend the dollar. We need to make the, the, the currency really mean something. And that equates to earning something on your money for just saving it. So after this reading, uh, there's been a rethinking of the Fed's next move. Uh, it's now widely expected there will not be a, a rate cut in the month of March, next month already. And uh, what about uh, May now uh, and beyond that? Uh, what's your expectation on, on when rates uh, may come down uh, or not? Well, Frank, I'm starting to think that rates may not come down. Uh, you know, a 5% rate. Uh, it, it is is not not so terrible, you know. For those of us who've been around, we remember much higher interest rates and a very robust uh, economy, uh, uh, even even a greater uh, gr gross domestic product, where the economy ballooned at uh, almost double this this rate of interest. So, um, you know, and and then then again, there's concerns that well, maybe we're in some kind of a a bubble. If you just look at the, those magnificent seven stocks uh, that everybody's worried about, uh, it, it's been earnings driven rather than relying on on lower interest rates or what we call price earnings multiple expansion. Uh, that the earnings on balance of those seven companies have grown 28 percent 
since 2019, uh, 21% of that is attributable to sales growth. And, and that includes the COVID uh, downturn of 2020. So it, this is an earnings driven uh, economy, which I, I think could, we could, we could handle high rates for longer as Paul has said. All right. Getting back to the, uh, one of the star performers, certainly over the past uh, year and certainly even this year already, uh, NVIDIA coming off, uh, it's uh, all time high today by, by just a dollar 20 of seven twenty one and change. It looks like it's moving higher now in, in after hours trading. Uh, what about that hot name, uh, leading the, uh, the AI charge here, NVIDIA. Well, you know, it's really all about AI or artificial intelligence. Sam Altman, uh, who's the CEO at Open AI, uh, which is, is, is where this all originates. And, of course, Microsoft has, uh, has the contract with Open AI or chat GPT. But he's in talks with the United Arab Emirates and other investors trying to raise funds for, to boost the world's uh, chip building capacity and compete with NVIDIA to, to expand the ability to power artificial intelligence because it takes an awful lot of energy uh, to power AI. It's a power-hungry kind of technology. And, and uh, it, in fact, uh, Altman says it's going to require some, something between $5 trillion and $7 trillion dollars that's a lot of money. AI facilities consume enormous amounts of electricity. Uh, and, of course, uh, there's going to be more competition for the chips. NVIDIA is the leader, but I don't know for how long. In the meantime, NVIDIA is now reported to be the fourth largest U.S. company by a market value and, and can set its sights on passing number three alphabet, according to uh, some analysts. And uh, NVIDIA closes today with a market cap above Amazon for the first time since 2002. So that is, uh, that's big news today. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, all that really means is that it's, it's the most popular, uh, girl or, or boy at the dance. You know, it's, it, it's, it's a name that everybody loves. And it's funny how, uh, investors and even institutional investors, those who should know better love, uh, to pile onto a winner at much higher, higher prices. I've uh, heard it de- described as a wave. In fact, that's an old Charles Dow, the, the you know the icon who created the Dow Jones averages. Uh, one of his observations with it is is that markets and participants are like a wave. They, the wave builds, and you can't really see it at first, and then when it crashes, everybody gets on just as it crashes. So we've got to be mindful of uh, you know getting in too late. So certainly we've seen a roaring start to uh, 2024 and hitting uh, record highs uh, almost every day, it seems, for uh, for the Dow and the S&P 500 at least. Uh, is the party over here, uh, Gabriel Wisdom, or does this thing have uh, more to go? Well, Frank, I, I think it's it's got a lot more to go, honestly. Uh, as I started to say, it's, it's not the, you know, tech bubble of 2000, 2001. Uh, these companies all have – very uh, impressive revenue growth and earnings growth. Uh, also, that they've got wide runways, lots of business that can be done. Uh, then there's the sentiment side. Americans are feeling a whole lot better about the economy thanks to slowing inflation. Uh, I saw the University of Michigan's latest consumer survey, and it showed that sentiment improved quite a bit, up some 13% from, uh, from December in the last reading. Uh, and then finally... Uh, there's the uh, there's the cost of living uh, adjustments that Social Security that comes up with the so-called COLA for 2025 for next year. Uh, it's likely to be less than two percent, one point seven five percent based on the latest consumer price index data. And, and remember, just two years ago, in 2022, Social Security COLA rose almost six percent. So. Inflation is down. Uh, I think that means markets probably go higher. All right, another uh, fly in the Chardonnay today. Uh, regional bank stocks uh, pulling back um, under pressure as as the uh, obstacles to uh, cutting rates uh, became more evident today with this uh, higher than expected inflation reading. Uh, one of the big uh, regionals back east uh, taking another hit. Uh, what about uh, 
these banks. Uh, and Former Navy SEAL Sean Ryan shares real stories from real people from all walks of life on the Sean Ryan Show. Laird Hamilton, welcome to the show, man. The truth about a good surfer is ultimately that you understand waves. You're actually a wave reader. I can go to the beach, we're watching a you know, wave come in, and I'll be like, oh yeah, that guy's going to crash. Is that intuition or is that learned? Yes. The learn becomes intuition. When you have that much volume of experience, it goes into the unconscious. The Sean Ryan Show on YouTube or wherever you listen. Ongoing concerns not only about rates, but also about um, commercial real estate and so forth. It is worrisome. You know, it's the second time in less than a year that we've had these worries about the health of, uh, of U.S. regional banks. Um, and, and, you know, last time it was uh, the crash of Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, it came when uh, everyone was worried about a potential hard landing in the economy. Um, and uh, then there was worry about a contagion uh, across, uh, you know, uh, other banks. Uh, and today we've got concerns about loans for office properties. There's also new concerns about multifamily housing as uh, at overpriced. And, of course, 70 percent of uh, commercial real estate loans, that includes multifamily or apartment houses, 70 percent of commercial real estate loans in the banking industry are with the smaller regional banks. On the air live with Gabriel Wisdom with American Money Management. At this point, Gabriel, with this uh, sell-off today, uh, any specific places where you are putting money now and or taking it off the table? Well, Frank, I think we're in some kind of a new cycle. Uh, you never know until, you know, until uh, you're past it, but it, it has all the makings of a, of a new modern super cycle uh, and these are long-term structural cycles uh, that uh, where you see changes in economic activity and in, in society in general, certainly in, in policy. Uh, and and the current super cycle, I think, uh, is is going to be characterized by stubbornly high interest rates, by more regionalization and localization, by regulations, and and certainly aging demographics baby boomers are are getting older but but they're healthier older people and and so i'm i'm looking at sectors that can benefit from stubbornly high rates from uh aging demographics in particular all right and what about uh cryptos we see a uh, bitcoin uh, doing what bitcoin does uh rising ahead of that uh, Bitcoin ETF uh, announcement and approval by uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission, then a pullback and then a rebound uh, above 50,000 as of uh, as of yesterday uh, and just below uh, 50K here now. Um, any uh, observations here on what's happening uh, with Bitcoin and what's going on uh, with the cryptos at the moment? You know, Frank, it's, it's surprising that uh, the run-up in prices has been uh, mostly attributed to investor enthusiasm around the of SEC's approval from, from, I think it happened January 10, uh, on my birthday. Because that's why I remember it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you had that group of 10 spot Bitcoin ETFs that were finally approved by the SEC and Chairman uh, Gensler. But I, I think this might have something to do with China. The, the Chinese stocks have been dragged down the last three years. They've lost some six trillion in valuation. And what have Chinese investors been doing? Well, they've they've been buying cryptocurrencies, according to Reuters, the source I saw. Uh, one finance executive who wanted to remain nameless, but at a major Chinese bank, said uh, half of their portfolio is now made up of digital assets. Uh, so you, you've got and, and crypto is illegal in China, which makes it more appealing. So I, I think it's more than just the adoption of the Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, the Chinese, which is a very, very large uh, group of investors, are interested. Excellent point. I wish we had more time uh, to explore that further. Hopefully I get a chance to speak with you again uh, soon. Uh, Gabriel, thank you very much uh, for taking the call today with the Dow down more than 500 points from its uh, record high today and uh, that thorough uh, analysis of what happened today. And and uh, we do appreciate it. Gabriel Wisdom, Managing Director at American Money Management based here in Southern California and author of Wisdom on Value Investing. Thank you very much uh, for coming to the line this afternoon. Thank you, Frank. 
So you've been hurt, and it's time to call a personal injury attorney. But who can you trust? Do your homework, because not all law firms provide the same care experience, and results do matter. The Fielding Law Team brings years of expertise, and they're concerned about your well-being. Personal injuries can be overwhelming. but With the right ethical attorney by your side, you can navigate the legal process with confidence. Attorney Clark Fielding and his team of legal sharks prioritize transparency, communication, and results. They've been serving our 790 KBC listeners for years. Fielding Law understands the challenges you're facing, and they're ready to fight for the care, follow-up, and compensation you deserve. Before you decide on an attorney to represent you, do your homework, research your options, check their online reviews, and make sure your attorney has a proven track record in personal injury cases. Fielding Law Firm, not just a legal team, they're your advocates and trusted counselors dedicated to achieving the best possible outcome for your case. For a consultation with the Fielding Law Team, call 833-88-SHARK. That's 833-88-SHARK. Your journey to justice starts with the right choice. Fielding Law Firm, where your case is their commitment. 790 KBC welcomes Il Devo coming to the Orpheum Theater July 12th. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Right now, caller 9 wins at 1-888-795-222. And get a pair of tickets to the show if you're caller 9. Call right now, 1-888-795-222. Motaco Money continues here on 790 KBC. Smile, even though the market is down big today, down 525 points at the close for the Dow to 38,273. Had been down more than 700, so that's one reason to smile today. The Dow coming off its record high. We achieved just yesterday the S&P 500, which hit an all-time high. On uh, Friday, pulling back uh, 69 points at 4,953, pulling back below a 5K, which it hit uh, last week for the first time and moved above that to an all-time high. The Nasdaq down to 287 today at 15,657. The yield in the 10-year note has shot up to 4.31%. The market reacting to the hotter-than-expected reading on inflation, which came out first thing this morning. The producer price index, uh, it turns out, rose 0.3% in January with the year-over-year rate falling to 3.1% from 34 a month earlier. The so-called core rate, which takes out food and energy costs, rose 0.4% to tick above Wall Street expectations, leaving the year-over-year core rate unchanged from December at 3.9%, which is nearly double the Fed's target of 2%. So that's one big reason why we saw the market um, to money come on the uh, table here today. The volatility index spiked of 14%, gold pulling back nearly $3, back to $2,004.30 an ounce. Oil up for the seventh day in a row as we watch the upheaval continue in the Middle East. Crude oil up nearly a dollar at 77.87 in New York and up to 82.77 in London. Bitcoin up about 300 now at 49,736, Ethereum up 8 at 2640 and Doge at eight cents. Moteca Money continues here in 790 KBC. Good afternoon. We're doing it live in the four o'clock hour here in 790 KBC, streaming live online worldwide at KBC.com and your on demand Moteca Money podcast, KBC.com, Apple, iTunes, all your favorite podcast platforms. The ladies were eating on inflation, spooking the markets today with the Dow plunging 525 points at the close, coming off its all time high. The SP 500 down 69 and the NASDAQ down 287. Hotter than expected reading on inflation, which has been described as a, a nasty tax on the consumers. Speaking of taxes, let's bring in Grover Norquist now, president of Americans for Tax Reform. A lot to uh, talk about, including um, a report that the IRS failed to revoke access to sensitive tax systems from contractors who failed background checks and doesn't have protections for some of those systems to prevent unauthorized removal of taxpayer information. Grover Norquist, thank you very much uh, for coming to the line. First of all, uh, your reaction to uh, today's uh, big news here. Well, big news on inflation being a problem. Uh, that continues to be a problem because the government continues to spend too much money. I was taken aback when the president ran that ad. I thought it was a spoof, but I'm told it's true. The one where he said the reason why uh, stores are putting fewer uh, potato chips inside a bag for the same price is because they're trying to cheat you as opposed to that's what inflation does. They could either have the same size bag and have to charge more. They decided to keep the same price and they make it smaller. That should have Mr. Biden did this written on every uh, collection of potato chips and cookies at the store. 
Why would you? America starts the day with America in the morning. Hi, I'm John Trout, your host for the latest news, politics, entertainment, business, and weather. Our staff of correspondents provide a fast-paced look at the world with specialized reports from where news happens. In New York, I'm Sue Aller. I'm Charles Tillotesma. Sagar Megani, Washington. I'm Jennifer King. I'm Clayton. Neville. I'm Kevin Carr. I'm Archie Zaroleta. Concise, accurate, and fresh each day. America in the morning, the podcast available wherever. You listen. Bring attention to what he did. And they call it shrinkflation. That's been a story that's been out there uh, for for more than a year, right? So uh, I was also uh, surprised by that. Uh, Cereal boxes uh, getting smaller, uh, candy bars and uh, all sorts of things uh, getting smaller, and and you're paying uh, more for it. Yes, that's the way. Inflation can either show up by charging you more for the same thing, or if they're trying to keep the price down, they have less sales. And that's oddly enough what they did. But but the worst news, the worst news of the day is that the IRS, which has had all sorts of problems keeping, you know, your privacy, there were uh, 7,900 people and organizations, tax returns were leaked to some left-wing group uh, by people at the IRS. They only charged one guy with one leaking one document, okay? They knew this had been going on for a while. Uh, They didn't answer questions from Congress. The IRS, instead of saying, we're outraged, we're disgusted, this happened, we're going to hunt this down and fire everybody involved, um, basically went silent, lied and said they didn't know what was going on long after they did. And so uh, the head of the Ways and Means Committee said, we're going to ask TIFTA, which is the Treasury Inspector General of tax administration, which is the oversight group for the IRS. They go on and and study stuff and find out what's going on. They they were asked to find out, how could this happen? How could you have this much stuff leaked? Uh, Isn't this kept secret? They found out there are 364 different systems in the IRS. They don't all mesh. They don't all talk to each other. There are 153,000, 153,000, People have access to these very sensitive systems. Not this is not your average send email thing, but these are sensitive systems about your private life data. The IRS they promise they'll keep it a secret. They don't. 153 people, and then 13,000 of those are contractors who come and go, and when they leave, they don't necessarily turn off their access, and that's what they found. And when the IRS was asked about it, they said, "Well, we don't know how many systems we have." Uh, and they weren't willing to help TIG to find out. The TIG to the, the inspector general figured it out themselves. This is an agency that got caught misusing people's data and doesn't care. And when the inspectors came in to find out how this happened, why did it happen, how do we not do it, they weren't even interested in helping. They hid stuff. They didn't return calls and letters. They, act, they said basically, we have no idea how many systems we have, which either is true, which is kind of sad, or isn't true, and they were just trying to hide things. This is not On the You're Live with America's uh, leading tax premier advocate, Grover Norquist, and uh, thank you for that update uh, on that very Im- important story today. Uh, what about uh, any relief in the pipeline for um, taxpayers? Grover, I, I know you're watching uh, what's happening with this uh, proposed uh, tax relief legislation. Uh, House lawmakers are, are set to... Uh, to vote on uh, what's the latest on that? Yes, a number of the Republican Trump 9, 2017 tax cuts lapse this year, halfway through last year, um, and so they need to be extended. That's the R and D research and development tax credit. It's uh, uh, expensing for new business investment. Uh, it is a number of different things. It, it is also some of the per child tax credit. They're all going to lapse if something wasn't done. So the Republican House led on this and also negotiated with the Democrats in the Senate. And they got a lot of the business, very important pro-growth issues uh, put forward. And, and uh, it, uh, it expects to pass the House and the Senate. Uh, the Senate was part of the negotiation, but it was the Democrats in the Senate who were part of the negotiation. So I think the Republicans want to at least touch it. Uh, before it goes out the door. I, I believe that this will pass. It had overwhelming support uh, 
in the House. It has support in the Senate. It's a very important thing to continue. Politically, this is part of the pro-growth section of the bill. And remember, Biden ran for office promising that he would repeal all of the Trump tax cuts, all of them, and that, that none of them were any good. They're all just for rich people. These are very important to job creation. And now Biden's out there begging Congress to pass the continuation of a tax bill he lied about in order to get into office. He now realizes that if this bill, and there's one question, though, was there a hiccup in that that didn't help the economy? Was the fact that when they said it's going to go, you saw the stock market do better? Uh, it is very important to the economy and to the stock market that these Trump tax cuts be extended uh, and not be allowed to lapse. I believe we're on track to have that happen. Thank you very much for that important update tonight. Grover Norquist, President of Americans for Tax Reform, live with us here on Motac on Money on 790 KABC. Motac on Money continues here on 790 KABC. Good afternoon. We're doing it live here in the 4 o'clock hour, 790 KABC. Let's take a look at the latest news on the L.A. crime wave. Shoplifting reports in L.A. This is one of our top stories today, surging by 81% last year. Overall crime also up big. Let's bring in the Honorable Dennis Zine now, former L.A. City Council member, retired LAPD sergeant, current LAPD reserve officer. Dennis Zine, thank you very much uh, for coming to the line. We have Dennis Zine on the line, and uh, we appreciate that very much. Uh, Dennis Zine, give us your reaction to these uh, latest reports. Frank, it's not surprising. It's the same trend. The criminal activity continues in this region of Southern California, and basically we are becoming more and more victimized by the predators that continue the crime trend, whether it's smash and grab, breaking into homes, stealing cars. It just continues. And what's really sad, when I look at the number of LAPD officers, which keeps shrinking currently at 8,958 to police this massive city, and it's just not enough. So we don't have enough detectives. We don't have enough uniformed officers in the cars. And it's just a sad situation for the people in this region of Southern California, in particular Los Angeles. And we have a district attorney that just doesn't care about holding people responsible for committing crimes. I've been in LAPD since 1968. There used to be a thing called shoplifting. Your second offense you would be a felony and you could go to jail. Well, now we've got this trend of smashing grabs, which is epidemic, and it continues over and over and over. And we have a district attorney that doesn't do anything about it as far as prosecution. This no bail system is a joke. You sign a ticket, you don't show up in court. No one's out there arrest you because you don't have enough people to go out there and do it. So it's a merry-go-round. And I feel for the victims that have to endure this continuously and it's not getting any better with the current administration we have with the district attorney's office in los angeles county and again i emphasize many times it's not just los angeles there's 88 cities within the district attorney's jurisdiction of la county 88 cities are suffering the consequences of what's happening with this crime trend and we look at the stats and it just gets progressively worse we can't recruit police officers so people are victimized and what a lot of them are doing now and they can legally do that, is getting a CCW, concealed weapon to protect themselves, their family. We shouldn't have to resort to that, but that's what has become very necessary to survive in this region. And you mentioned uh, all those cities here in Los Angeles County. Many of them have supported the recall uh, of the incumbent, uh, George Gascon, who is currently running for re-election. And uh, today there's going to be another uh, big debate uh, among the Candidates looking to uh, replace uh, George Gascon, United Chambers of Commerce uh, in the San Fernando Valley, uh, putting that uh, debate on, and I'll be moderating uh, this evening. So uh, looking forward to seeing you there, I, I hope, uh, Dennis Sign. Um, what would you like to hear from, from the candidates tonight? Well, Frank, uh, and I'm glad you're going to be moderating because you know exactly how to ask the questions. You've been in uh, broadcast for many, many years, probably longer than I've been on the face of this earth, this earth but actually not that long. But necessarily is, what are these candidates going to do? If Gascon gets reelected, I will tell you, guaranteed, the, the crime trend will continue, and people who have any stake in this region should probably consider moving to another place. But what we have is candidates, other than Gascon, he said he's not going to show up, probably cowardly, not facing the challengers. 
Uh, we're going to find out what their role is. Do they support the death penalty? Do they support putting people in prison? Do they support protecting the innocent victims? Or do they just want to continue what's happening with this administration of Gascon? So we will be able to quiz them, find out what their stand is, and hold them accountable, hold them responsible, because many of your listeners, I'm sure, have been victims of crime. The car stolen, the catalytic converter stolen, the homes broken into, it goes on and on and on. So we will find out tonight with these candidates, and hopefully they will be able to win one of them. Any of them would be better than Gascon, any of them. But we hopefully will get one that does support punishment for the criminal activity and get those folks away from us that want to respect the law and live a comfortable life with our families and enjoy the prosperity that we have, period. That's all we're asking for. Nothing less, nothing more. On the air live with the Honorable Dennis Zine, uh, and you mentioned uh, victims, uh, and certainly it was victims that drove the uh, the recall uh, campaign uh, uh, against George Gascon, uh, and we're waiting to find out, I guess, through the court system what, what the ultimate uh, result will be here. But uh, but certainly in other forums, um, he's been confronted by uh, people who've lost uh, loved ones, and um, they've been heartbroken over um, uh, how the, uh, the how he's treated the. Uh, not the the victims, but the um, but the the uh, the criminals uh, have been uh, Survive. Yes. right given the soft glove uh, treatment. Right, right. But I, I've seen victims many times. They sob and they say, and I hear it many many times. Where is justice? They keep saying the same. Where is justice? Well, justice is in the hands of the district attorney's office in Gascon's hands. He doesn't care about justice for the victims. He just cares about letting the criminals run free, and that's exactly what he's done since the time he's been a district attorney of L.A. County. It's a tragedy, and hopefully it will stop. And the debate tonight, hopefully we'll get those candidates up forward and see which one we want to support for the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office. And certainly uh, at, at uh, one of the recent debates, um, he was confronted about uh, these uh, gang enhancements, which apparently are, are not happening. Maybe you can explain what's happening. This following this uh, tragedy uh, just over the weekend, uh, L.A. County um, uh, arresting um, two people, uh, L.A. County sheriffs arresting two people in a, in a recent shooting as gang members who targeted random people. Uh, what's your reaction to that uh, horrible news and um, and how this case might be handled? Well, if you look at the statistics, it shows the homicides continue, the gang activity continues. You know, we have this building downtown where it started to be tagging. Now they're jumping off the building. Uh, it's just a matter of time till someone gets killed in that. Uh, yeah. It's not a district attorney's challenge. It's a city attorney's challenge. But the bottom line is it's become a, a ruthless uh, renegade environment where you don't have compliance with what is a normal custom of respect for people and respect for the law and compliance with the law and let people live a happy life and enjoy life. But it's just that his attitude is don't hold people responsible, whether it's a murder, a rape, a robbery. He doesn't believe in holding responsible. He wants to put police officers in jail, not criminals. And that's where Gascon's coming from. And God help me, if he wins the election, we are going to be lost for the next four years. Guarantee we will be lost in this region of Southern California if Gascon gets reelected. I can't emphasize that enough to the listeners. This is a situation that will not change unless he is removed from office. And that can be done at the election, which is coming up next month. What about uh, what's the uh, the mood out there? Uh, you're close with the, the police uh, at the moment, so you know what's going on out there. Uh, in reaction to uh, this revolving door uh, policy we're seeing at the moment? Well, the police throw their hands up. They arrest someone. They don't post bail. They cite them a ticket. They go out. They don't show up in court. The officers are frustrated. They're, they're spinning their wheels. They're spinning the wheels, and they're not seeing justice. And that's what people keep saying. Where is the justice? Where is the justice system? We have people who are running for district attorney who are judges who are so fed up with the system, they're leaving the bench to run for district attorney. I find that amazing that they're so frustrated that they see this, this injustice on society. They're giving up the bench where they are sitting superior court justices and running for district attorney because they want to make it work for the victims. I compliment on that activity because they're so concerned about seeing the victimization. How would someone want to leave the bench as a judge, which is a very nice position, good salary compensation, et cetera, but to go back to run the district attorney's office because they see the tragedies happening over and over. I commend people who take that stand because what they're looking for is justice in the system. And if you have justice and you have people get arrested and prosecuted appropriately and the sentence is appropriate, 
we're going to have a civilized society because we've become an uncivilized society with what has been happening, with all the crimes that continue. And the other question is, are they repeat offenders? Yes, they're repeat offenders because they know there's no consequences. So they continually commit the same type of crimes over and over. They're going to cemeteries and stealing the brass on graves. I mean, at what point do we find it's outrageous? They'll go to a cemetery and steal, and, and steal the, the brass on the grave, the gravestone, the headstone. How ridiculous, how senseless. These people have no compassion in their hearts for victimization. And these criminals continue to prey on society. Hopefully it'll change. When Gascon's gone, somebody will do the job and we will then save the victims and incarcerate the people that need to be incarcerated. Dennis Zine on the line with us, the Honorable Dennis Zine, former L.A. City Council member, longtime LAPD sergeant, current LAPD reserve officer. Thank you very much for taking the call live with us here. Stay tuned now for the 790 KBC News Blitz with Randy Wang. I'll be back tomorrow at 4. Motec on Money, 790 KBC. On the Bigger Pockets Real Estate Podcast, co hosts David Green and Rob Abasolo interview real estate investors and entrepreneurs about successes, failures, and hard earned lessons. Joined by author Dave Meyer, who wrote a book. I did write a book. It seems like you're coming out with a book every four minutes. You are one to talk. You've released two books this year. I've done half as many as you. It is more about strategy than it is about just finding whatever the new buzzword happens to be. Bigger Pockets Real Estate Podcast on YouTube or wherever you listen.